looks like a fucking jump scare attraction. Hello, everybody. We are recording. Our computer just yelled that we're recording. Apparently, Zoom now has a new, I guess it's a safety feature. I don't know, but it yells into safety? your ears. Safety? Danger. I, like, danger feature. <laughs> so um, beware. <laughs> M called the voice bombastic. It screams, this meeting is now being recorded into your it, ears. It only screams it at the decibel that makes your entire body jump out of its skin. It does. That's- <laughs> it, we were prepared for it and it still like shook us to our core. Um, and the reason I stopped and started after we recorded the ads is that I still don't have a laptop and I still don't have video <gasps> recording. And I was up all night panicking, like, how am I going to get this video on YouTube? And then I thought oh, no. there's only one way. And it's that we have to record this entire segment and just upload it straight to YouTube. So there's no editing on this video, okay, Emothy? Unscripted. <laughs> oh my well, gosh. Well, it's always unscripted, but now it's raw, real, unedited, and a lot of ums, yeahs, likes, uhs, all the good stuff. Sorry, it's going to be... It's going to be usually, a real hoot. I usually you- cut out... Uh, I've actually memorized where M goes, uh, and I've memorized the sound shape of it. And so when I'm editing... Honored. I'm- Honored. Yeah, you're welcome. And so I cut those <laughs> out. But so this time they're all going to be in there. So God, well, I hope there's good no luck. pee breaks. I hope there's, we there's just got to roll. There's also it. a lot of uh, geo. Uh, oh, that's parking. right. I'll have to mute myself quite a bit because uh, yep. geo didn't get a slot in daycare today, which is just great. Uh oh. Uh, um, so this is some real time on the fly editing. OTF. OTF. Uh, no <laughs> post. You can't fix anything in post. Uh, right it feels it like now. when like mtv like the jersey shore like the, the season's <laughs> already ended but they're bringing back the bonus footage and like <laughs> but like they didn't have time to put to edit that in post because they were like i don't know they might like it all shitty and like they might just like the raw and footage. honestly so it's here we easier go. to just throw it up there and see what happens yeah yeah free that's content a, that's exactly right so anyway it's our birthday episode so you know what we might as well make it as just uh I don't know, freewheeling as possible. So happy birthday, M. Tomorrow. Happy birthday. <gasps> Yay. Look a happy sign. birthday. So cute. I'm very excited to uh wait, that's look, adorable. Look M like- hung up a sign above their head, uh, the it is your birthday period from um the office, and it's hung right above their head and put on a beautiful glow stick crown. It's a it's a twofer. Thank you. Is it's- it a crown or is it a uh a halo is it a tiara um, what is it certainly not a halo um <laughs> on principle um let's just call it um hmm i don't know a, i don't know a beautiful uh oh a trashy classy headband just like i wear yeah this is an honor of you christine <laughs> I'm oh, so honored. I'm trashy. Yay. Yay. Okay. Uh, I wanted to really duck out the room, but let's just put it this way. I, my notes are, are very extensive and I <laughs> stayed up later than I planned on because the goal was, I was going to wake up early, deck out the room for you and then like surprise you with that. But this was all I had time for. So, well, it's beautiful. And I was very, very shocked and surprised. Um, I didn't plan anything for you until tomorrow, until your actual birthday. I apologize. I feel like this day snuck up on me. I mean, like this recording day snuck up on me somehow. It did too. I, I, uh, we planned, I mean, we're recording. So maybe we should have talked about this earlier, but like I, we, the original goal was to open our presents on yeah. here together. Mine are supposed to get to you today, but they didn't get there in time. And then I there guess was one versa? present that M requested specifically that I ordered <laughs> with expedited shipping and it's still not here. Uh, that actually <laughs> might be why Gio's barking because it's slated to arrive today. So I, I feel very bad, but I will say I ordered it the moment M told me about it. So I wasn't like late. I just, I just knew M wanted this specific gift. So I, I wanted had to it so order much. It, and I didn't I- want to send everything but that. And th- so it's going to be late. I apologize. But um, I have something set for tomorrow <laughs> just to make up for it to, to can, be a, an amuse can we bouche, can we amuse bouche. Uh, oh you know i love when you say amuse bouche uh that was the present right that, there that's it you're welcome that's There's the end of it a few things i love more than specifically the voice of christine saying specifically the word amuse bouche i don't know why <laughs> that's it, it that's it, the combination it tickles me all the way to my very core um i maybe we'll film we'll film us opening presents and maybe there'll be a patreon thing mm-hmm. bonus content okay i think that's Perfect. a good idea i feel like i've been slacking on patreon um so this will be a fun like i don't know bit video gift video 
we uh we did want to say there were we had a few announcements right uh yes we did um first of all it's our birthdays <laughs> that's the number one <laughs> first middle and last thank you the end. <laughs> <laughs> i hope everyone wrote that down um <clears throat> I'm turning 30. You're turning 29. So you're still in your twenties. Uh, White knuckle in it, baby. Yeah. I'm trying to embrace it. It's hard. Uh, it's difficult for me. Um, Are you okay? Cause technically while we record this, this is your last day in your twenties. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to say it, but oh, I know yeah, you're going to say it to me next year. So it's a uh, <laughs> early karma. I'll tell you if the water's warm or like filled with sharks next year, I'll be like, come in. The I water's already- I already know filled the answer. With poisonous sharks. Come on in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> come just get it's filled with more with wrinkles and more back pain and good luck. Also, <laughs> honestly, at this point, my acid reflux, back pain, and entire body hurting are like already so normalized with this freaking human in my body that I'm like, bring it on, <laughs> world. Okay, bring it on. I mean, if I if I'm old statement to make the day before you turn 30 my <laughs> friends right you are correct I regret it already. it's like looking literally looking at your 30s through the veil and saying you won't <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like this is no veil there is no no veil no window we're coming straight at you we There's are no the shark protection. we'll see you in 24 hours you're the poisonous <laughs> shark that lies in your 30s <laughs> um yeah so I'm trying not to panic but you know what it's okay. I keep telling myself, oh, well, when I, when my child is 30, I'll be 60. Like I keep like playing Good that night, game, which God. is not fun for my psyche. So I, I will need to just chill. I will tell you that's the exact situation. My yeah, mother's we, on the exact and other end of that situation exactly. because when she was turning 30, I was, I, I mean, also like really right down to the date. Cause you're May and this, this one will only be a couple months after you turn third or no, well, I'm your June. birthday, your Hello. birthday's June. Did I know, you already so forget my birthday. It's not about <sighs> you in June. I forgot. I, I, for a moment there, I had a, sl- I had a slip, but, uh, yeah, my, I was born only a couple months after my mom turned 30. So like the exact, oh, that's right. it will be. Yep. And so she's currently panicking that she's hey, about to turn okay. 60. Linda's have it. Honestly though, Linda's had a great time. She was, she won on let's make a deal. She won a trip to Vegas. Like if that's my future. <laughs> peak of her it. life. Peak of her peaking, life. Peaking at like what in her 50, <clears throat> listen, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. Fine. Um, the other announcement we had was something we meant to mention last week, Yes. Um, which is that we were on a podcast called the V magazine podcast. It's called V like letter V V want to know. Um, and it was super fun. Uh, we Very had, fun. we had a great time and we meant to mention it last week because, um, I think the episode is airing and we like totally, we were distracted talking about ourselves, I think is what happened. We really were, but you should go check out V magazine. We, uh, we meant to give them a shout out. We're very sorry that we're belated, but they also seem to understand that it's our birthday month and things just go <laughs> awry. I think so. they don't seem to understand, but we just <laughs> forced them to listen to it and just accept it for what it was so look if anything people look v magazine we're saying it on our birthday episode so if anything uh, you know what that's true more people are going to hear about it now than ever so we could say or they're just going to skip the beginning because they know what they're in for uh (laughs) on the fourth birthday episode of this is this the fourth or the this is a fourth birthday episode on the podcast when we first started the podcast i was turning 25 and you were turning 26 Oh my God. That's horrifying. (laughs) Not to freak you out there. Oh, that fully freaked me out. Well, I planned on like having like a little cake and everything. And because this is the first year, Christine, where it would have four digits. That's right. Cause usually it's, it's been two, cause I was poor. So I made a two, five, (laughs) six birthday cake. That was a combination birthday cake. We shared the two and based on where you looked on the cake, it looked like either 25 or 26. Listen, number candles are like $4. So I was like, I'm not. I'm and well, then another one. the next year you only had to buy one more candle because the two and the six got used for me all over again. That's you right. had to buy yourself a th- the seven, <laughs> and then I wanted, and then you got two seven eight two eight nine. <laughs> this year it's two nine three zero, and it's like whoa, that's a, you lot. Better, that's a lot of candles. <laughs> it's really chaotic. I mean, at least next year we'll be back to our regular to programming, our, our usual programming. We'll get a new three though, because the, the two ah! is probably like at its nubbin now. We probably it, burnt it down to a crisp. She, she's, she's, she's man down. She's yeah. seen better days. Um, but yeah, I think. <laughs> anyway, imagine there's a cake here. Here, my communal almonds. Imagine. Oh, that's so nice. Imagine right here is a little two nine three zero I love your communal almonds. I brought this nice little dark chocolate peanut butter cup. We can pretend that this is Aww. your cake too. 
That's so nice. <laughs> I'm nuts about you. That you that's about that? adorable. I'm also nuts about you because it says peanut butter in it. I'm stealing your, <laughs> stealing your phrase because I don't have anything better. <laughs> well, okay. So I do want to get into the story if, unless you have any other announcements. I don't think so. I just want to say happy birthday and I love you and I wish I were there to give you a hug, but happy birthday. Oh, that's all. Oh, happy birthday. I'm I, it's, excited for you that you're still in your 20s. I am also very excited for me that I'm still in my twenties. <laughs> Poor Eva during the quarantine, we've gotten really close and I, I keep forgetting that we have a little bit of an age difference. I keep being like, man, I'm no, so terrified of point. turning 30. And she's like, yo, like, I know. Calm it's, down. it's honestly like probably pretty rude that we do this to I'm everybody. So sorry, Eva. Cause most people are older. Like, I mean, statistically, most people on this planet are older than us and we're just like bitching around here as if you know, I, I always know. forget my, who I'm around. I just like scream about it. And then I expect that if someone's mad about it, they'll say something yeah, like, what is Eva like, going to say? Like, poor oh, Eva's just that so must nice. be so hard for you. And that you're turning 30. It's like, okay. I'm not turning 30 No, I don't. or whatever. You're turning 29. Um, <sighs> yeah. I'm sorry, but anyway, anyway. Th- okay. So this story, I'm excited. This- I'm embracing it. Just FYI, everybody I'm embracing it. So don't worry. Thirties are supposed to be fun now, nowadays. So I'm just going to try and enjoy it the end that's great i'll feel that and way next year, year i'm, I'm gonna sure. get really wasted since i can't get wasted this year okay. wait a minute i pl- i promise to be at your 31st birthday you because be, yeah. i need to be dragging you home i'll have your baby on my goddamn hip and you like over my shoulder on the <laughs> other side just be dragging all of the sheepers home <laughs> honestly the big party will be you get a fucking giant 30th and i just get wasted and that'll be my party. Yo! you know what i mean okay. like it'll be a fun combo deal everyone see you in 365 fucking days <laughs> <laughs> we're get, it's gonna get well crazy. and i think since this week our birthdays are thursday friday i think next year they'll be friday friday saturday, saturday. <gasps> okay. well deserved by the fucking way like that's gonna be perfect good timing on that both our birthdays good, are on a good friday. job linda and renata you really they nailed it, did it. <laughs> fridays for both our 30ths watch everyone be like that's not how the calendar works but i don't know we'll, <laughs> we'll find out next year i'm pretty sure that is exactly how it works out I okay so so this story, um, I hadn't, okay, this one is really wild. I hope you're ready to riff a little bit. Um, oh. So, and it is longer. So this is one of those situations where if you are on a road trip or something or cleaning, um, I hope you enjoy this. Also, I didn't prepare that. I didn't tell Christine that. So um, I'm I, sorry. And I hope you're well, prepared. Well, I also didn't here. prepare M and tell M that we're not taking any breaks at all. So um this is going to be an interesting ride and I'm going to stop drinking water right this very second. Or we can just uh, make Eva entertain people with her cats as we pee. That could be true. I will have to go pee downstairs because I don't necessarily need everyone listening to me pee. I'll Um, have to use RJ's bathroom. We'll have to, we really are planning this on the OTF. Yeah. Yeah. You can't tell. (laughs) Okay. So this story was recommended by a few people actually during multiple Marvel Mondays or movie Mondays or whatever it is. Um, also shout out, follow me on Instagram on Mondays. We do Instagram lives. Um, Yay. But a few people suggested this. I never heard of it. So let's go. This is uh, the story of America's her, her scene shifter. Her, is it her scene or her sign? Apparently it means like goat like her scene. Oh, I have no, I, I feel like bovine. So maybe her sign. Okay. Like bovine means cow. Like I tried looking up pronunciation on YouTube and it kept saying her scene. Oh, maybe it is. But all of the references were like a video game called the elder scrolls. So my brother plays that. Okay. Well, per- according to the elder scrolls, apparently it's her scene. I think. Okay. That sounds right to me. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, it's so, okay. America's her scene shifter, aka the anomaly. What is that? I know. I never heard of it. I anyway. So it thank you. Chilling. It is very. It's fine tingling, if you will. So <laughs> this is a cryptid, but also I'll get into it later. That there are some arguments about whether it's a cryptid or more of a haunting. It's kind of one of those combo deals. So. Ooh. Uh, so the. Her scene shifter, America's her scene shifter, is a mysterious bipedal creature um, found most often throughout the East Coast, but there have been sightings in other patches of the country. So apparently um, there's a creature like this who's also been seen in Europe, also in Asia Minor of all places. Um, not 
Europe. Um, right? Isn't it? Or is that Turkey? Isn't Listen, why would you ask me that when we're not editing? Okay. Asia Minor is <laughs> Turkey, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So uh, anyway, so there's one in Europe, hence this being America's her scene shifter. Got it. Which means there's two of these we've never heard of. Oh my it. God, you're so smart, Em. You're so smart. Am I? Anatolia, also known as Asia Minor, is a large peninsula in Western Asia and the westernmost protrusion of the Asian continent. It makes up the majority of modern day Turkey. I am a geography expert, actually. I am so impressed. Thank you. Uh, um, interesting. Uh, it has, um, I think, I'm pretty sure it's German. It looks German. It has the one in Europe. So its name is, I'm guessing also <laughs> her scene shifter, like, go like, it says, bear with me, Zeganlik mimic <laughs> okay sorry i was impressed a minute ago i don't know what's <laughs> happening now is, is how do you say l-i-c-h-e is leech licht means licht. light light okay so maybe it's goat how do you say goat and uh uh Zwiege, i think that's sound that sounds oh, kind of like say, how this is spelled yeah i think it's uh Zwiege. let me see let me yeah it's Zwiege, it's Zwiege, sorry Zwiege. okay so goat light mimic <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> okay. Whatever. I just trust okay. You. Anyway, uh, it's in Europe, and it has. I think it's and it's called the Hersine Shifter. Okay. Um. So we think that they might actually be the same creature, even though they're. It's apparently quite the world traveler. Um. But they think it at least might be in the same family because the description, whether you're in Europe or, uh, in the United States it seems to be similar mm -hmm. um or maybe the one in europe is the one that like inspired the name for this one i don't really understand but anyway this one is the americas um and despite the sporadic sightings elsewhere researchers have actually been tracking uh the anomaly mainly on the east coast so we assume that that's its home in the united states okay. um the first sightings began in I saw some uh, things about the late 80s, but let's say early 90s, because that's where most of the stories start, um, when people reported seeing something out in the woods that didn't look or feel human. That's when we were born, by the way, the early 90s. Oh, well, there you have They were probably it. like, uh-oh, a creature has appeared. And it's, it's, it's a goat. Yeah, <laughs> it's a goat and then two Geminis. Uh-oh. Um, so the, her, her scene means goat, like shifter. We will talk about that part of it later. That actually falls under the conspiracy theory that this thing is paranormal, mm. um, like shape shifting. So let's worry about the goat thing for now because it, it's wonderful. Um, so <laughs> I'm guessing it's because it looks like a goat on its hind legs, but without the horns. So oh. it's kind of just like, it's goat, like goat, like exactly. Got it. Um, so basically, uh, most of the lore suggests that the creature has brown fur is nocturnal since, um, it's probably nocturnal since most of the sightings are at night. Some cryptozoologists have actually tried to compare, um, the anomaly or the Hercene shifter. I think they just call it the shifter. Um, I just saw some articles that said shifter so i don't know if even they didn't know how to pronounce her scene they probably did um, <laughs> <laughs> they have so they suggested that it might actually be related to the chupacabra because oh. a lot of people have said that this thing has brown hair but it's really patchy and so the chupacabra is really patchy but the there's another argument to it that it's actually more like a cousin of sasquatch it's all over the fucking place this thing oh my gosh so they suggest that it's related to the chupacabra because some reports say that its fur is patchy at the chupacabra. Not all accounts report this, but some people make mention of it in their descriptions. But um, the big argument is that, well, chupacabra, the, remember the, um, like the main explanation for what a chupacabra probably is, is like a dog with mange. Yes. Yeah. And so <clears throat> they say that this probably isn't that, or it's an advanced version because this creature is bipedal like Sasquatch. Right. So it might just be a patchy Sasquatch. I'm, I'm not totally <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> a Sas, a patch Squatch. No, okay. Um, <laughs> a patch Squatch. Uh, but so, or they think it could be Chupacabra just learned to stand on its hind legs, which is its own version of terrifying to me. It is fully terrifying. 
but this seems to be more on the East Coast. And I guess Chupacabra is normally seen more either on the West Coast or not even in the United States. So sure. um, they are just, or anyway, so there's a back and forth on that. Um, fun fact, this argument, um, uh, let me make sure that I read this right. Sorry, everybody. I know that we're this not is the real this deal, time. everybody. I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> oh, 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 here it is. Okay. I, I wrote it. It was 3 a.m. I wrote it wrong. So I wanted to make sure I didn't fuck it up. But uh, so some people say Chupacabra. Some people say it's more like Sasquatch. And the Sasquatch argument pulls more weight because there actually have been sightings of uh, the shifter in the same places where people have seen the Sasquatch. Um, okay. So it just makes more sense that they might share a nest or they, Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Precious, right? Um, and uh, so they might think it's maybe a smaller breed of Sasquatch or a younger Sasquatch because um, Sasquatch slash Bigfoot slash Yeti range between like three to 600 pounds. And this is more goat size. It's more, it's light, it's lighter. So um, anyway, so luckily uh, from the behavior that I guess the local lore when they've talked about like what its characteristics are like nobody has had any accounts where it was aggressive which is nice um so if you end up in the woods and see it at least you're not like super in trouble um, yeah i mean it's better than those puck wedgies that like try to lead you to your death in the road you know what for all we know this also does that so okay fair i mean i guess we, we don't know we can't claim it but <clears throat> every time i think of like a dangerous cryptid i don't think of mothman i don't think of sasquatch i think of those pug wedgies because they seem like they're going to be so cute and then bad things happen you know now that you say that it freak it because i was about to just get into it's it, i'm gonna call it the universe speaking out and interrupting me because I was about to get into this one part that I think is really cute about uh -oh. the, <laughs> the shifter. Um, so apparently they're uh, from what, I mean, again, remember this is all lore. So people are like, oh, I've seen it and it was doing this. So all these uh -huh. accounts are alleged, but uh, there have been multiple accounts that have said that uh, this, the anomaly is actually, even though it doesn't seem to be aggressive towards people, it's very uh, protective of animals. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that precious? So yeah. there was uh, one witness who claims that he and his friends saw the anomaly in the woods with other animals and like the animals who usually like in the animal kingdom would be rivals. They were all like nearby the anomaly at the same time. Oh, like, Oh, he's like the peacekeeper. Yeah. Like, like they all trusted this creature. Aww. Um, and in 2015, around 2015, there was, um, the society for cryptid exploration, the SCE, <laughs> and they traveled to a patch of the woods where people had had regular sightings and they found signs uh, in this space that they can only explain as the anomaly, not only being a peacekeeper for the animals, but like luring them in purely for like peace, like to befriend them, I guess. Oh, like, that's nice. So um, this is because they found some unnatural aka man-made habitats for different animals all near each other where they usually would be separate um, and they also found a lot of food on the floor as if they were safe traps that they had that this thing had oh. built and there were no signs of any struggle between the animals so it implies that there was there, there were signs that the animals had been brought in but then nothing bad ever happened to That's them fascinating because the word lure has such negative connotations this, like you this think one's you're being lured it up. into the woods, like something bad's going to happen, but no, you just made a new friend. Lure you in for treats on my floor. <laughs> That's I mean, all I've ever wanted right? to be lured for. That would uh, get me in there. I got Geo in. That's you right know? quick. Yep. So uh, let me see. They found, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and even though they're gentle with animals, I did say that they are not aggressive. They actually seem to be afraid of humans. Aww. So when one, when people have tried to uh, get near it, I guess, um, it will run away. So it has, we only know a very few close contact encounters. Um, and there's more proof that it's very disinterested in people because multiple times now enthusiasts and slash researchers I don't know how serious these researchers are but um, they have found areas that they believe were anomaly shifter nests and they found several sets of waste content um, oh. that 
each time it was like about a mile or so out from the shifter's alleged home. And so uh, the contents indicated that there was some sort of illness as if like the food wasn't properly digested. So from these, from like the samples they had, um, the enthusiasts were able to predict that maybe when the shifter travels too far from its nest, it gets anxiety. <gasps> Is this like, I mean, this just feels a little too relatable. Right? I just got like, like, you're right, a spine tingle. Like loves animals, hates people, like vomits at the thought of leaving home. Like, are you like, kidding me? Too far away and uh, my bowels can't take it anymore. Yeah. Bring me home. Oh my gosh, this is really hitting, hitting very, very close. Yes. So there is a more realistic explanation for why the food hadn't been digested. And it's because that's like the more fun thing we hear about. <laughs> okay. But the more realistic explanation is that the food hadn't been digested because the anomaly had been or the food that was in its system, it had been digesting food that had massive levels of t tannins? Tannins. S tannins, okay. So, um, which I explained that for people like me who don't know what the fuck that is. So um, from these undigested foods, they were able to look at the content and build out this idea of the uh, anomaly's regular diet. Okay. So they were able to take all these samples of undigested food, take them to a lab and say, like, what can you tell us about this stuff? They also were able to just kind of see some of the content in it because they could tell that the diet was um, mainly berries and Aww. like mushrooms that it had foraged, um, which would explain tannins because apparently that's like a big thing on fruits. Um, and uh, so the diet they assume is vegetarian, which also checks if they're like not aggressive towards animal mm -hmm. or people. They're animals herbivores. Or people herbivores exactly so they found uh in these particular sets of samples the sce uh was told by researchers that the food was unripe june berries this is the nat the nutrition lab that is uh reporting back what they found unripe june berries lingonberries blueberries and cranberries i had no idea blueberries are in the fucking forest by the way yeah fun fact Blueberry i looked bush. it up i was like this sounds like bullshit blueberries are found in some forests um and so most of the diet seems to be berries. Uh, and according to Wine Mag, for people, it's literally from fucking Wine Mag, by the of way. It I, is. I had no idea that tannins are like part of alcohol. That is why I know what it is. I'll be uh -huh, fully that honest checks. with you. That checks. Uh, so winemag.com says, quote, plants have tannins to make themselves unpalatable. Their purpose in nature is to deter animals from eating mm. a plant's fruit or seeds before it's ripe. That I did not know. Tannins are responsible for that astringent feeling you get from biting into an unripe fruit. And so mm -hmm. that makes sense that it was, it kept getting sick because it was eating only unripe food. Oh, nature is fascinating. I gotta right? say, that's really cool. So uh, they also, I don't know how they found this. They not just found uh, berries in there, they found lemon rinds, like citrus rinds. <laughs> well, I thought you said it wasn't cruel to animals, but it sounds like lemons stand no chance around this souls, thing. if it has one. So they also found multiple fermented red plums in the system, which one, also have tannins, but two, if they were fermented, that means that this thing might have also been getting itself drunk. Yes. And it not only was it getting drunk, but since it only had nothing else but poisonous unripe fruit in its system that's why it keeps vomiting whenever it leaves its is it nest okay like do we need to give it some bread like what <laughs> like why, I, is, why is it only I, eating unripe fruit i literally wrote so the contents of uh their diet tell us that either one the uh shifter has social anxiety Aww. because it's getting sick away from its home two it's drunk and not eating anything else so mm -hmm. it's on an empty stomach or three it just might have some reckless tendencies oh for God. all of the above this is me d all of the above <laughs> it, it certainly you know what you two would get along very I'm well i'm like startled at this this is this is shocking information well, all the way down to the lemon right you wouldn't eat lemon though i wouldn't i mean i would eat maybe lemon's cousin but don't tell him that lime I meant like other lemons that weren't special to me, but. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So Whatever. this is not. In my iced tea. Okay, fair. <laughs> this is not the only time that the shifter has shown us that they might be reckless in their decision-making. Um, 
earlier, I said that their habitat seemed very animal friendly. Um, fun fact, it was also really plant friendly. Apparently the SCE, when they found um, different habitats that are alleged hot spots for sightings, um, they found that the vegetation was really well kept because there were few broken branches. So it was seems to be kind to plants and that like the places where there should have been a lot of trampled trees Aww. and things like that. It was keeping a garden, maybe. That's I'm not sure. That's really nice. Maybe trying to grow its own unripe fermented yeah, fruit. Yeah, that is entirely possible. Uh, but the habitat itself was outside of nature. It was scattered with random items that shouldn't have been <gasps> on that part of the area's floor to begin with. Like so what? apparently this thing is a collector and it found... <laughs> It has a lot of trinkets from all over the area, all like piled together as if it was like attaching to these things and keeping them what? around. And none of them have been useful in any way for survival. Um, okay, so hang it, on. So it's also collecting random items that, and getting attached to them. This is like sounding <laughs> a little too spot on. Oh my God. Oh wait, so hang on. Let me read that again. Found trinkets from all over the area that have been useful in no way for survival yes yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> that's been useful in zero ways uh fun fact the sc the sce did find that some of them were like left in containers as if like they were the prize possessions oh and the shifter had been keeping certain trinkets in one which makes no sense at all because it's a forest but they had a turtle shell <gasps> wait so, why they, does that make no sense aren't turtles like from the ocean no, my dude. Turtles, turtles are in from the, woods. the forest? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Well, then that would make sense. That makes more sense why there's a turtle <laughs> shell. So anyway, it's uh so although some of these items seem to be really well preserved, some of them were just <laughs> strewn across a several mile radius of the nest. So that's what? how they were that's how it's, they were able to like it's find their it's their garbage pile. Listen. It's their garbage pile. That's I this... get it. I get it. They were, I think they were like coming into the woods and finding these spots and knowing where this thing probably stays because there was more concentrated garbage in the like center. Trash and it's pile. Slowly yeah, 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 yeah. A trash, trash pile. pile sometimes spreads. It happens to the best of us. I get it. Um, Jeez. Just gotta oh God. scoop it all back together. It seems that if the anomaly had been dropping these items when they got distracted or maybe lost on its way back to its home. <laughs> Wait. Okay. I feel so attached to this thing. Speaking of being attached to things. Look, people were suggesting this nonstop and they're like, trust me, you want to cover this. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So the SCE, the SCE also found traces of what they thought was blood on everything. So they thought maybe this thing had been cut or damaged, oh, or maybe no. finally there was proof that like it was actually eating animals. Oh. But when they tested it for DNA, they brought it to a lab and the red liquid, the red liquid was just, um, those berries and oh. fermented plum juice all over the space. They spilled and wine it, all over their belongings. It had, <laughs> Christine, it had this, a quote from the SCE. They, the plum juice had, oh shit, I just lost it. You got me all excited. <laughs> the plum juice had died into its nests after baking in the sun. So like, it was just like <laughs> left. It was just all this fucking red juice wine, I guess, fermented. So Fermented wine. plums, plum wine. Yep, delicious. Just, uh, uh, another note in their report was that the areas where the nests had been investigated were also a little too warm. And from this, the SCE theorizes that based on how much fur the anomaly has is constantly overheated and sweating. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. I have sweat. I was about to say, my palms are sweating just hearing this. <laughs> also remember that it's like German and, but it now lives in the United States. This is freaking even, me out a little bit. Didn't even think about that. Oh my God. This is freaking okay. me out. So um, based, oh yeah, based on witness reports, the SCE has been able to piece together and notice changes in the anomalies behaviors in connection with like, um, with the weather also. So that, I mean, in theory then based on like star charts or like the moons and the tides, uh, it makes them wonder if the anomaly is in tune more with that part of nature. So it's also potentially a very spiritually connected creature. This thing is so sweet. I am, I'm in love with it. I love it so much. I, I mean, how cool would that be if like it's chill, hangs out with animals, apparently spills wine everywhere. Loves to drink. All about like the connection with the moon and the tides. I mean, uh, I it's mean, my best on. friend. It's my best uh, friend. It, uh, so also from the, remember there were scattered items all over who could forget. 
I from the her. from the tools and the items at these uh, potential nests that the shifter had collected over time they also found that they had made some of them themselves and they were <gasps> it, so they have determined that another part of its personality is that this creature is uh, very curious and uh, creative and is like an excellent problem solver because if it didn't have the tool, it would make it itself. Like a cricket machine. It makes its own DIY crafts. Oh my God, it Precious. DIYs. DIYs. Christine. But and Decoupage on that turtle shell. Okay, but, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, even with the limited foot tracks that they've been able to go off of, because usually obviously cryptozoologists want to ch- test prints. Right. There are very few prints, but they, the prints have, but the researchers a have shape. They shape like a Rothy. Uh, that would be hysterical actually. And then we would know for sure that it was well, apparently it's you. Um, so uh, the limited foot tracks they have found show that when the, oh yeah, of course. Wow. It might as well be a fucking Rothy shape. <laughs> oh no. They have found some tracks, minimal, but some tracks to go off of around the nests. And they have found that the anomaly has difficulty with its sense of direction and seems to regularly get lost in the woods, which also corroborates with it randomly, with its randomly strewn items. Like my social security card. Like your social fucking security card that I've found on the bar floors like eight times in our friendship. And I'm like, Christine, you forgot this. Stop carrying that around. There's no need for you to have that on your person. Also pick up your plum (laughs) juice or whatever. Oh my God. I am in love with this thing. Get ready for it. If and when the anomaly decides to reproduce, local lore says that the baby would be born with fangs. Oh, (laughs) A la Kremit. Kremit? Wait, oh my god, you're you're a hundred percent right. Kremit and, and their teeth. Do you think your baby is going to have teeth? I think my baby is gonna have fangs for sure. Yeah. It for sounds sure. like it's part shifter to be clear. Part shifter. I mean she shifter shifer is what I'm gonna call him. <laughs> what <laughs> you don't like that? No, it's just very on the nose. Like <laughs> just too too much so speaking speaking of local lore let's talk about shifter and why that name is involved so i left this till the end not really to the end but i i didn't mention this yet because despite all the hard work over the years by the sce many believe that the entity poses as something else in the woods oh so complete plot twist the other side of the story is that maybe it's not as peaceful as we think, and it's actually a demon who is trying to make you feel safe in the woods with it. Oh, um, whoa, okay. I so like that turn of events. It's so a lot of well, there's a, there's two different camps between is it a cryptid or a shapeshifter or a demon. Many people uh, believe that the entity poses as something else in the woods, hoping for curious hikers to follow it or feel safe enough to stay in that area. I'd be screwed. And this, I, well, hello, you would go up to it and then all of a sudden, attachment. I would follow and it and get attached to it and drink with it and then it would what? Can't possess me? Kill me? One of these, uh, one of those following the, uh, oh, once those who are interested enough in the anomaly and choose to like get close enough to it, the demon will attach and follow them home. Oh no. Apparently. So it seems like a stretch, but many people claim to have experienced the anomaly post being out in the woods and it coming home with them. (gasps) So there are accounts of people, there's few accounts of any of the cryptid stuff. The SCE was basically the one that had most of the information on that. But in terms of demon (gasps) stuff, there are people who have uh, stories to corroborate their experience. So um, let's see. Where was I? Um, so some reports say that the spirit would be found moving filled wine glasses around. <laughs> and when found later, the wine would be gone. Well, you can't, that's not demonic. That's just an over friendly guest, house guest. Others say that there's an intense wave of the smell of citrus in their home. Stop it. Are you for, is this like a joke? Like when I did the Grinch or is this like for real? Others also say that their Rothy shoes mysteriously go missing. <laughs> well, uh, 
nice seeing you. I'm glad I was able to be visiting your home. I know you'll never invite me back, but I think I made the most of my stay and I got plenty of booze and some new shoes. I had a great uh, time. This phantom has also earned the nickname the Dancing Demon. Oh, like Kermit dance. Because of their weird motions that its apparition makes when music plays. <laughs> Are you making this up for real? Is this real? Many recall a sense of dread as the anomaly would dance toward them with the distant sound of Fall Out Boy playing in empty rooms. Oh, shut up. <laughs> is this, wait, is this, a, is this a joke? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm reporting what I'm reporting. Fall Out Boy. <laughs> One victim of the anomaly who wishes to remain anonymous and prefers the discreet name, the bad boy of broadcasting, claims that this demon attached to him his entire life. <laughs> you are such an idiot. <laughs> oh my God. He Her claims that he has grown up with this demon attached to him by I his side. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. People say that their Rothys just go missing all the time. It's crazy. Oh my God. Actually, while I have you, uh, earlier you mentioned... Uh, I'm to cry. This is the funniest thing that's ever I will happened. say that I mentioned earlier that this creature has left some limited footprints. And so here's a picture, actually. It's a part of their files. I am, like, crying. <laughs> <laughs> what, do they look, what do they look like, Christy? <laughs> oh, they're lemon rods. He's made of recycled plastic water bottles and they're machine washable. <laughs> I'm like gonna cry. This is so funny. <laughs> I get it now. Christine, Christine. <laughs> so one victim who is the bad boy broadcasting claims he's been attached to this demon his entire oh. life. He doesn't know what he's done to deserve this. He <laughs> he's heard music playing throughout the halls. He says there's faint whispers of Fall Out Boy, but he can also confirm the tunes of Jump Five, The Venga Boys, S Club Seven, and Micah. <laughs> <laughs> this has also been corroborated by the way by others who have come face to face with the anomaly and their hellish dancing moves um one woman who <laughs> wishes to remain anonymous but prefers the alias stinky witch says that <laughs> oh no no she okay this is a quote from the stinky witch so please be respectful this is okay. a, a victim we're talking about here so sorry uh stinky witch says she has a unique dance that resembles a puppet on marionette strings attempting a, <laughs> attempting a moderately placed Irish jig. Legend has it she can only be tamed by the sounds of Micah. <coughs> Mika. I'm so, oh, how would you know? Okay. <laughs> because I'm fully attached to this thing now. I think I'm atta it's attached to me and I'm attached to it. <laughs> and you are one with the world. Oh my God, I cannot deal with this. And I'm assuming, is that the bad boy podcasting, AKA Zandy Schieffer? Yeah. I'm an idiot. I tried to change it up a little bit, but it was not worth it. Oh, or, oh, it was... I see. Okay. I didn't know if that was it. No, no, no. Uh, I, I mean, what are you talking about? Okay. So they, uh, there are also. <laughs> this is horrifying. I, you really, man, I'm slow as hell. There are also claims that the spirit has liminal attachments to alternate realities, which is why they have interests and have been seen in places such as Stonehenge and other ley line towns. <laughs> uh, the bad boy of podcasting also claims to have had a doll as a child that would laugh demonically whom he named the cackling spawn. That's correct. That does exist. And some might believe that the cackling spawn was actually the Hershey Schefter manipulating electronics to terrify the young child. Emma. Uh, <laughs> bad boy, as we call him, also says his home uh, once had a piano teacher named Ellis who would go through the family mail. But was <laughs> Ellis really to blame or was it the demon moving around envelopes in an attempt to damage Ellis's career as a musician? Uh, but the worst sighting in Shifter history, one alleged witness once saw his Ouija board spell out, <laughs> I'm always crazy, 444. <laughs> 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 I was like, this is how, I was like, Emma, how did you not realize how similar they were to me? These go creatures. The anomaly has sparked enough tension amongst the East Coast and much of the world that the Zach, that even Zach Bagans himself has been uh, mentioned for investigation. <laughs> 
on a has been on the scene <laughs> in one of the unaired episodes of Ghost Adventures called the Maltese Bagans, which is uh, you can find on YouTube. He didn't. <laughs> He didn't seem to encounter the demon himself, although he did have a very few choice words for the audience by the end of the footage. So I would definitely check out, I would stay till the end of that video if you want to check it out. Um, Cause a very important message was uh, relayed to him uh, from the other side. <laughs> from the other side. <laughs> did you write but, all this? Did you do all this? No, it was on Google. What did you say? A lot of work. Between the two camps of is this uh, the anomaly? Is it a cryptid or is it a demon? So the, the SCE ran by uh, the CEO, M. Schultz, are the experts in this field. <laughs> so that's all made up. I was like fully on board here. Uh, they wow. So the SCE are the experts in the field on team cryptid. But for team demon, there are a few solid sources outside of these uh, other witness accounts. But these two sources in particular are very reliable with their years of research to back up their beliefs. One witness who curiously looks like a 16 year old version of the creature and claims to personally know them, uh, spoke on the demon's interest and let me know, quote, I can definitely say that this creature often appears when there is talk about frappuccinos, orange soda or bubble tea. Um, she does not miss. <laughs> She does not manifest, surprisingly, for like a, a demon. It does not manifest in basements or creepy rooms and refuses to go in them. Um, <laughs> she is often seen wearing a Scottish Rites masonry sweater and leggings and uh, is best known across all local lore, across all national lore, international lore, for spilling food and drink down the front of her shirt. <laughs> So if you've seen a stained garment near you, you might be afflicted with this demonic possession. <laughs> you really <laughs> got me. Wow, Argu I'm... Arguably, an even stronger candidate for the expert role is one of our key witnesses and Uber archivist, Renee Eid. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> what does she want? <laughs> what does she have to say? When asked to comment on the anomaly's known information, I was in under 30 minutes handed a confidential file on the creature, um, which- <laughs> Yeah, then I she can... didn't even like ask for any, any identification. <laughs> I literally, I'm not kidding, in under 30 minutes was handed a confidential file with all the information I could possibly need uh -oh. on this demon. Uh, this file is what I call the smoking gun in uh -oh. defense of the anomaly being demon versus woodland cryptid. Uh -oh. This is what I got. Subject, America's Hercene Shifter, AKA the anomaly, AKA the dancing demon. Uh, <laughs> paranormal classification, parademon, status, alive and multiplying. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. Natural form, demon-like appearance, but can shape shift into normal human form when necessary. First sighting, June 4th, 1991. Most <laughs> recent sighting, June 1st, 2021 in Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh no. Likes, alien ant farm, fallout boy. No. <laughs> Yagoot frozen yogurt, fill of the future. Snoop, <laughs> Snoop Dogg's 19 crimes wine, elephants, the brothers Grimm starring the late Heath Ledger and Matt Damon, Charleston shoes, Mike and Ike's coffee, Zach Bagans. Dislikes, Zach Bagans, Kyle XY, aspartame, their recent massage in Florence, Kentucky, and early mornings. <laughs> Was Renee sitting at our lunch just taking notes? <laughs> Holy crap. So there are also some field notes here. So it's not just uh, like the stats here. We've also got some like overtime notes. Um, I'm only going to list a few of them because let's just say these were extensive. Oh my um, God. The anomaly was born in 1991 in Southern Ohio. The first sign of their paranormal status was the gestation period. <laughs> <laughs> you, really, you really got me oh a baby God. a baby typically takes about 40 weeks but the anomaly refused to leave their human host until the week 43 i really hate that this is all true <laughs> perhaps they waited to ensure that they would be born during the gemini season for the most for the highest compound amount of gem of chaos, I suppose. Demonic, yeah. Demonic chaotic energy. The anomaly adopted three animals. Uh, so again, corroborating that they are good to animals. God, I'm an idiot. 
The dog is an angel and is unclear though if the cats are actually independent beings or if they are their own alternate forms of demons. <laughs> The anomaly one, this is just a fun field note I found and I think everyone needs to know about it as I guess this was meant to be a, I think uh, Detective Ede was just um, referencing little things that to look back on later and be like, this was a red flag. Oh, uh, the anomaly once ate their lunch off the surface of a parking lot in Burbank, California. <laughs> Un unclear why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. On a plate. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that, according to reliable sources. Thank you. Uh, the anomaly has had a few human romances, all with adults that lack a sense of personal hygiene. They do, <laughs> however, have a human husband who far surpasses the typical human male. The anomaly has tricked him into creating a spawn, and the world awaits. Oh my God, when you ask me if my child will have teeth. <laughs> Such an idiot. If the smoking gun, which I call that entire file, by the way, thank you, Detective Eid, for your hard hitting coverage. Stop giving her that name. She's never going to stop using it. If the smoking gun wasn't enough to convince you, let this be the nail in the coffin to do you in. Because after obtaining this file, we learned that there's a human husband mentioned in Detective Eve's notes, who is still married to the creature. And when we asked him for a statement, he also sent over some field notes that oh, date back to at, least, to at least October 2018. Going, <laughs> off, going off of Detective Eve's notes, we think that the demon has in fact tricked this man into marrying the That's demon. so sad. Because with marital privilege, the man legally would never have to testify against their demonic DNA. That's or, pretty tragic. When people are like, is this a demon? Is this a cryptid? Just no comment at all times. However, must have caught him on privilege. Most must have caught him on a good day because uh these field notes got sent to us, and that makes it even more powerful because he legally could have said uh no comment uh, <laughs> and not thrown this person under the bus. So he broke but, spousal privilege. I got it. And uh so it that just makes it all the more um hard hitting and that someone who didn't have to say anything and is arguably one of the biggest experts in this oh field had something to say. So we uh rumor has it that he's just ready for the world to know the truth and no more of this back and forth on uh the Hersene shifter. And Hurst, basically this, I'm so stupid. <laughs> this this star witness, by the way seems to be just as certain as Detective E that the anomaly does have demonic roots. So no. <laughs> these are the field notes uh, from the desk of Mr. L. Oh no. One of the defining characteristics of this cryptid is its mouth noises. There are, <laughs> <laughs> there are many unique, a uh, distinct noises when they account, uh, but particularly when they encounter fruit, particularly mummified or fermented, they sound like they are laughing uncontrollably similar to a hyena. <laughs> When surprised, they make a distinct gasp. And in recent video of it sleeping that mysteriously cannot be located, they stuck their tongue out and spit into the air while remaining asleep. <laughs> okay, I, we don't need to talk about that any further, please. Please, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> it is also known for a liking of all pastries except for a strong dislike of croissants. So I think here was where he was saying, if you are like, if you're trying to keep away vampires, keep some garlic next to you. If you're trying to... <laughs> If you're trying to avoid the shifter, throw out some croissants, you'll never see them again. <laughs> also, Mr. L states, its origins are unknown, but Bobby Mackey's as a portal to hell from episode 13. And oh, it's very, great. it's very close to the location of the first sighting of this cryptid. So we can just take our guesses from there. Um, <laughs> anyway, despite this horrific evidence from key witnesses, uh, the uh, America's Hersey chief uh, sh shifter has <laughs> <laughs> wait what <laughs> has uh, has built up quite a fan base over the years. Uh, so as as a cryptid, there's even been gatherings around the country in hopes for a sighting. Although <laughs> mysteriously, others have said that they have seen them haunting, particularly as of late, theaters and comedy clubs. So. Oh, God. <laughs> In more recent years, those seem to be people's best chances at witnessing a physical <laughs> manifestation of the creature. Um, but in most podcasts, uh, not most, but many podcasts have discussed this creature. News outlets have done segments on their whereabouts. Everyone is just obsessed with this thing. And uh, there have been a lot of sightings in uh, the last couple of years, especially during the pandemic. Most sightings have been over film, um, but there many are hoping that soon there will be a higher chance of running into America's Hersey and Shifter on the streets. 
Oh and my God. Among the fandom, there are uh, two in particular that have come forward as relatives to the anomaly that are willing to share their personal experiences. Um, despite the local lore, they actually claim a completely different story that it has just been sensationalized. The world has been completely gaslit. This is not a demon. They are a pure delight. And uh, also a human who uses she, her pronouns. So we can stop saying they. Oh. Um, interesting. As far as as far as we know, but uh, what so a one aggressive demon. I just finally, finally, uh, one woman claims to be the anomaly's aunt and says, "Had I not had this is a full quote. Had oh. I not had the many uh, no 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 this person says you're a pure delight. I mean this the scripted <laughs> the demon is a pure delight. <laughs> uh, had I not had the many occasions to spot this cryptid, I would have I would have not believed such a being truly exists." a non-annoying millennial, a grounded, oh. <laughs> a grounded true crime expert, and a pleasant mother to be, uh, a being like the America's Hercene shifter is hitherto never been found in nature. Probably her most surprising trait is her caring nature, given that she is in, shall we say, quote, the business of show. And we must find a way to clone her so that TV shows, movie sets, and recording studios become populated with others like her and really entertainment world of narcissist and self-centered individuals. Oh my. That, <laughs> that being said, this is a quote, you know, that being said, she is not perfect. The anomaly does not eat meat has a penchant for creepy memorabilia and is way too hard on herself. However, these minor flaws are outweighed by the aforementioned, aforementioned positive traits. Oh yeah. And she has great taste in husbands and pets and gives the best gifts ever. <laughs> so when a shocking turn of events, someone is out there claiming that this demon is actually wonderful. Some and cuckoo is out there trying to change the narrative. I see. The person with the most to say, and this is where we'll we'll leave it, is the second source who claims to have given birth to the demon herself oh. 30 years ago this week. Oh. Sounds... There's a lot going on here. That's a big claim. I'm just going to say that's a strong claim for someone to be making. Brace yourself because okay. they just went. <laughs> Quote, she was three weeks late and quite obstinate. Oh. After she was... <laughs> After she was born, she always put her hand out as if saying no to everything. S spoke full German sentences at 12 months old. Decided walking was too hard, though, until she was about 18 months. <laughs> she always knew what she wanted. You could not trick or force her to do anything she did not want to do. At 22 months, she handed me her pull-up and said they were for the new baby. When she makes up her mind, including potty training, she gets it done. Oh, good for her. <laughs> we came from the hospital... Uh, with her brother and she put her arms around the baby and said you're my brother they were inseparable she insisted on sleeping in the same room when he cried as a baby she always knew what he needed often I found her in his crib and that kid questioned everything I said and did she this is a, a real sight so imagine your first uh impression of the Hercene shifter uh, -huh. uh she wore a bib on her head for many meals she <laughs> decided to wear her left shoe on her right and ver vice versa <laughs> When I said, do not eat the cat food, she had a mouthful. <laughs> and when she wanted affection, I better give it to her. She's the only person where our cat Plumy, Plumy, <laughs> Plumy <laughs> scratched, uh, it's the only person our cat Plumy scratched because she wanted to cuddle them and Plumy should have wanted to do so as well. <laughs> The father of this cryptid, Bernie, liked, oh, to, liked to reprimand through religion at the time. And <laughs> Oh, we're going there. Okay, that's fun. <laughs> and she asked for the very last time, explain God. He tried, <laughs> she got up, huffed, stomped outside in the backyard and screamed, if there is a God, show yourself and bring me a lion. <laughs> Bernie was deeply impressed. She is a philosopher. She is so wise. And then came the teenage years and he was not so impressed anymore. She is fiercely loyal. She would stand up for her brother, her friends, anyone who she thought needs her help. She is an extremely hard worker, very creative and spares no time to a good job. Her own standard is extremely high, but do not ask her to do something she does not like, <laughs> like a paper for a teacher she could not stand. She stood many, uh, she started many assignments the night before they were due. One of them was 12 pages long with a full biography and she got an A while I was having nervous breakdowns. Her... <laughs> Her classmates took three weeks. It took her three hours. She's extremely confident and sometimes not. <laughs> That's wow. That's a wishy-washy statement right there. <laughs> when she was about two, she decided that she was cool. Okay. Oh, dear God. 
<laughs> she did not watch television. I don't know how that happened. She wore she uh, she wore her bib on her head again, her sunglasses upside down, refused shoes, put bows in the cat's fur. And when she figured out birthday, she conned me into making cakes and birthday parties for her stuffed animals. I think Pooh Bear had five birthdays in May as of, of 1995. <laughs> I put my foot down, said only one birthday a year per bear. And she remembered every stuffed animal's bear in our house. So we partied hard. <laughs> and then there was Alice. Oh God. Oh, is this her, another demonic her, entity? <laughs> potentially the sidekick to America's Hersey Shifter. <laughs> there was Alice, her invisible friend. Alice came to life in January, 1995. <laughs> Alexander started to become a pest at two years old and to keep him in check, uh, this cryptid got Alice. When he wanted to sit somewhere, they would say, no, Alexander, Alice sits there. She terrorized us. <laughs> But she is also a great sister and daughter. I had to get a PhD to, keep, to be able to keep up with her. Uh, <laughs> so that is a very long statement from the, I don't know, the sad, sad woman who had to give birth to this thing. Another victim, we might Another say. Another <laughs> victim. And finally, we did reach out to uh, the Anomaly's pets who made it very clear they did not want to comment. And <laughs> uh, that is the story of America's Hercene Shifter, a.k.a. the Anomaly, a.k.a. an anagram for Christine Maria Schieffer. Happy, <laughs> happy 30th birthday. That was the funnest, <laughs> nicest, most hilarious thing ever. Um, you're going to make me cry. I'm like cry laughing. Um, how literally, did you do that? <laughs> I didn't go to bed is how that oh. happened. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, holy... Crap. That's why I texted you and I was like, can we put this off? Because I, I need a little more time. And I was like, Blaze had originally the note about Blaze was going to be because he wrote last night and he went, uh, yeah, no problem. I'll send something to you tonight. And he didn't send anything until this yeah, morning, right when we were about to record. So because I, I said, I'm about to record. And he probably went, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. So he added something last minute and I was like, well, I have to insert him. So um. Happy 30th! I, I cannot believe you did that. Wait, what? I'm such an idiot. I'm going to listen back and just pound my head against a wall when I'm like, I love this thing. Oh my God, I get it. The best part was like literally in parentheses where I said like, oh, in the SCE, they have found some tracks. I wrote show Christine Rothy's pick because I had a picture ready to send you. You were not responsive then, to my hilarious Rothy's joke and I was and then like, you're like oh my god what is it Rothy's and in my head I was doing some like mental chess of like do I even show her the picture or do I let her keep thinking this is like a weird joke yeah you were really like I could tell I like th threw you completely off your flow I was like oops I did not get it like I, I literally didn't get it until you said fallout boy that's how fucking slow I was I thought you were gonna get it once I I thought you were gonna get it a lot earlier, but I uh, specifically the spilling wine everywhere, losing all your items and sweating. I thought I was like, like that's fascinating. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Um, oh my god, <sighs> next year you're gonna have to update and be like, she's really gullible and like pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> <And doesn't... laughs> I also asked Maggie for a comment. And she was like, I I'm not sure I understand the assignment. I'm just gonna leave this one alone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Our poor manager, Maggie, is like, this is not in my job description. This well she was like favorite. i haven't had any uh any uh true accounts yet so i'm gonna let you just do this on your own <laughs> aka peace no thank <laughs> you left the scene <laughs> but uh anyway oh i thought for sure the name alone that's why i changed it to the anomaly for a while because i was like her scene shifter is way too close to christine shifter. i the whole time was like that's so weird but i was like i guess shifter like I almost said how creepy that it's called the shifter. Like, well, you did, you said something about how it was like super creepy. And also like, I didn't even add, I said something about like, <laughs> you said, you said like, oh, it sounds like it could be one of those things that like, just like without even thinking about just like you follow into traffic. And I was like, um, <laughs> what I is wrong like, with me? I was like, that's kind of, that's very true. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like, it sounds nice, but it's really dangerous and might kill you. Um, I cannot believe I did not figure it out for so long. I was, you're, I was so fucking invested in your story. I was like, this is amazing. I've never heard of this thing. 
Uh, I hope you realize how much I just trust you wholeheartedly, blindly. I would follow you. I forgot to add anywhere. that personality trait into this, but like, wow, you really do just blindly. <laughs> just follow you right into traffic. <laughs> 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 and that was the funniest thing ever. I cannot believe. I mean, Jesus. Okay, I was well. trying to think of a way to give you a, a birthday present that could actually get to you in time. So right? I was totally, I was totally, totally blindsided i mean when you were like everyone's requesting this i was like wow i can't believe i've never heard well of it. also like from the very beginning i was like oh it's german and then i mentioned asia minor because zandy said that was like a home ref I, a reference a mil i was like biting my tongue because i was like that was an inside joke with me and my brother and my friends but then i was like it's not a good story i don't need to share that on the podcast this really was a complete um experiment with how people's brains work because I gave them a very vague task and everyone came to me with different I, responses fascinating. like your mom just shared childhood stories my Lisa mom was like this is how she was born which is like nope, Lisa just that. complimented the shit out of you uh your brother just literally sent me a list of the most weird facts like about your childhood jokes. like yeah. Ellis the piano teacher going through your mail I'm <laughs> amazed that he didn't mention the fact that I locked Ellis in our elevator uh we have this like, that would have really been so good as the paranormal thing of like Ellis even got locked in yeah because that the, I oh, wow. I did that once I turned the power off I we had this like creepy old elevator um because a priest used to live in our house of course and uh we, we were going I was like oh Ellis I want to show you the the elevator and then I like hit the emergency stop button and he started you really are a demon I know also, <laughs> like Ellis like couldn't catch a fucking break in that house okay Jesus. Ellis read my mail all right I, I caught <laughs> Ellis reading my mail that is not my problem oh oh my god I like can't even believe this anyway uh also I did not get a uh, quote from Eva because Eva was, I frantically went to her place last minute yesterday and I was like, you got to help map this out. I have no idea what poor I'm doing. Eva. <laughs> <laughs> Eva was, poor Eva. Cause she was like, I had, I wanted to go do errands and I went, Oh my God. She ended up doing them earlier so I could come over, but I definitely rerouted her whole day. Cause I was like, I need, I need you to help me here. And, oh, and for the longest time we were like, what are we going to name this thing? And I was like, I have no fucking clue. I think I really, I just best. went to like an, I went to an anagram maker and just typed in, uh, Christine Schieffer. And then it immediately, I saw the word shifter and I went, Oh, absolutely. Oh, shifter but, is so good. But, but then there weren't enough letters to fill out anything else. So I threw Maria in there and I got America's shifter and I went, oh, hell yeah. America's and then, shifter. And the only word left was the letters that made her scene. I like frantically was doing like word scrabble cheat puzzles to try to figure <laughs> out what the, and the only word that came out that f had every letter of the leftover letters in your name was her scene. And I was like, how the fuck am I going to make this happen? <laughs> I have never, I would, I was totally just following you blindly I had zero clue zero clue literally until you said the words follow boy I was like every time I said oh is this real I expected well, you to be like yes please shut up Christina let me tell the story well you kept saying is this real and then I would like keep going with my notes but I think you thought I was making a joke because then I was like oh like and then they keep mysteriously losing their Rothies and you're like ha 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 and ha, I was like ha. in my head I was like that's literally in my notes you should have gotten it by now I really it <laughs> took me clearly way too long I mean add gullible as hell to your notes that was probably the nicest 30th birthday present ever in all of history I tried to include as many things about you as I could I need I'm I'm not trying to like Toot, toot my own horn here but do you know how hard it is to take everything you've ever done I thought it'd be easy because we always say like oh you're basically a cryptid you're basically a demon or like a lot of times I'll <laughs> mention something and you're like oh I do that and so m stupid me I was like I don't even have to do research this time it's going to take me an hour tops to just like insert <laughs> creepy things Christine does she's super but, sweaty <laughs> but to make like this massive narrative where like there was like a like research society is following you was a real challenge i don't know how you did that i mean i don't know how you did that i really don't. I, never, I never want to do it again but that it was, was a fun. lot of fucking work i'm very proud of it i'm glad you liked it and i'm glad it makes me happy that um you didn't catch on right away because like the the joke lingered longer. my god it was long it must have been half the story <laughs> at least that I it was, was just... i was definitely on the second page <laughs> wow i'm so slow you guys i mean i wonder if anybody else figured it out way quicker than i did probably Probably. probably i probably i don't know but anyway happy birthday oh my god um, and that was so fun i was so i was like crying i had to keep covering my face because i was crying you're so hard. you are my favorite cryptid demon i 
I mean, even when you said it dances weirdly, I was like, oh, and you were like, crazy. like Kermit the Frog. And I was like, <laughs> yes, like Kermit the Frog. Exactly. Almost. Wow. And, and Kermit and their teeth. I can't. I'm so slow. Em. <laughs> I'm going to listen to this again and just pound my head against a wall. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> oh my God. That was so sweet. Em. I feel like I was at like a party and you were like reading a little, nice little speech about me. Aww. This, by the way, I will be reciting these notes verbatim at your eulogy one day. If you I was go say the me. funeral, so, yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, and through this cemetery. Oh, originally we like uh, Eva was like, maybe we shouldn't make it a cryptid. Maybe we should just make it fully a ghost because then you can say that like they like people often see them ever since they've been growing up in a cemetery and like like it was it was There's so a lot perfect of weird connections <laughs> it was so perfect that you grew up next to a cemetery i'm mad at myself i didn't find a way to insert that factoid but whatever. i probably would have figured it out if you said it grew up next to a cemetery i probably would have been like wait 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 wait, wait. <laughs> that's way too specific <laughs> Oh, anyway that is hilarious it. um i just wow i can somebody please I, I hesitate to ask this generally because it's just a lot but if somebody could illustrate this for me this this cryptid i would be so if, honored. if you would be so if you would be so bold would you just send christine a picture of herself yeah okay fair <laughs> yeah that doesn't need to be illustrated i'm looking at it that's right why now. i didn't describe it very well i was like brown hair Do and you know I was... that i almost asked you in like about 10 minutes and I was almost like can you, wait what does it look like again I almost asked you and I kept well I kept shut. I really leaned into like the some reports even say that it might be the chupacabra because it's known to be to be patchy like have bald spots I was oh like, my god I am and, so slow and also you like how you collect items and they found it in a turtle shell I was talking about your like your Louie like your <gasps> Your tortoise bat, your turtle purse my, my tortoise my large what was it my my large tortoise oh my yeah. god yeah oh anyway. my god Anyway, enjoy finding all those little Easter eggs. Later. I'm going to have to go listen to that again and just be so embarrassed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you just made my day. And you know what? I know I said we can't have a pee break, but you just made me literally almost pee my pants. Like actual, <laughs> in all seriousness, practically pee my pants. Um, so I'm going to mute my microphone and go pee. Perfect. And everyone can just look at this nice little um, Patrick Stump figurine that Blaze got me for my birthday. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now you can go also scream at Blaze uh, and be like, how? What the hell is the matter with you? Also, he didn't send you that video, did he? No. But I, but it would be, I it's, really would like it. I, I literally <laughs> made him think he swear to me that he would not send it to anyone. I really need it. So he took a video of me sleeping the other day and my tongue was out and I was just like spitting everywhere. Okay. We don't need to talk about it. Okay. Further. But like, it's my birthday also. So I would like the video. <laughs> Maybe for your 30th, that will be your gift. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I will be very quick. I promise. Eva, are you here to entertain the masses with me? Or is, is this all me? Did you listen to the whole thing? Yes. It went so well. Oh my God. <laughs> I was just like, like listening and being like, oh my God, this is going so well. Oh my God. This is going so well. <laughs> I, I really, uh, I think the only way it could have happened is by being like a little slap happy. There was no other way I was going to be able to bridge all of those gaps, but. I felt like that as we were talking about it yesterday and you were saying that and I was like, yeah, that, that feels right. I feel like there's been a handful of times that you've said that to like in, in life. And it's always true. I'll solve it slap happy at 3am and it always works. <laughs> no, nothing a slap happy brain can't figure out. Uh, what was your favorite part? Oh my God. I did love the. I don't know. It's just all so, so good. I love the name you came up with. Cause yeah, like you said, that was like such a part of what we were trying to figure out yesterday. And as soon as you said it, I was like, that's so perfect. We were, we were desperate. What were we about to call Christine? What were we about to name her yesterday? The yeah, I feel like there are a lot of things that we kind of tried to land on and they were all like parts of something else. Yeah. Anyway, so, here's here's the ghost writer herself. Who... I could not believe I didn't <laughs> figure that out. Wow, that was just wow, wow. It was all M. Honestly, I just sat there as a sounding board and was like, oh yeah, what else? What else? Oh, oh, the oh, Eva. oh, the like. <laughs> Eva's the one who taught me all about tannins, and I was like, excellent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love how I'm like I know what that is from wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I almost didn't suggest it because it felt too like on the nose but then i mean you obviously you worked it in so perfectly that it was like so thank you so, 
Ling and Fairies. <laughs> doesn't like to leave the house. I really did to fair to be fair, I did do a deep dive on like the types of berries that you find in forests that also have the highest tannin content. So that it would make sense in case you were trying to like fact check me in the middle of this or something. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what Asia Minor is. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Eva, for entertaining uh, during the pee break. Oh, my God. I'm just so I cannot believe that. Um, you really got me good there. I'm going to have to FaceTime you later and just be like, wait, what the hell was that? I'm not kidding. Renee really did send me something. And I'm not like all of that. The whole legend uh, that is Christine Schaefer. It was like within 20 minutes. She was like, please hold and just wrote it up like she's been waiting for this moment her whole life. <laughs> I was like. I saw her yesterday and she like referenced things that I told her yesterday. So like, <laughs> clearly she was writing this on the fly. Dislikes Kyle XY aspartame massages in Florence, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is its own horror story that I'll share on another episode, but wow. Yeah. That, that lady made me watch Kyle XY. Mm. Well, um, anyway, there you have it. Wow. Um, you just got me really good there. I was totally flabbergasted oh my god um I really wish that I had like something super fun and awesome and that's okay genius to share but like I don't because it's it would have been very weird if we were both if we were able to pull that off at the same time and then everybody was like why are you both texting me these weird questions about each other yeah I (laughs) clearly did not prepare like I said for our birthday episode and I assumed you didn't either but clearly you did so I apologize. Uh, I have a story of a literal massacre today. So it's, <laughs> it's wholeheartedly wow. the opposite of a fun birthday story. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. I okay. had these notes ready in advance and I didn't really plan when they were going to be um, aired. So, and you went ding, ding, ding. This is the perfect time. This is the one. Um, <laughs> oh, I will give you a fun fact, which is that uh, that I forgot to tell you at the beginning, which is that the baby is currently the size of a classic Game Boy and a packet of astronaut ice cream. Oh, that does make it fun when you make your baby sound like ice cream. That yeah, is- 80s and 90s. I finally figured out how to access the 80s and 90s um, fun facts. So uh, astronaut ice cream. And is it about- the size of the pack of the ice cream or the ice cream itself? Because those the are pack. very different sizes. The pack. Oh, the that's container. a- Big ass baby, damn. Yeah, I know it's also the size of a Maltese puppy, and a spaghetti Fuck. squash, Ugh, it's and an not... ear of corn. There's, a, I have a lot of apps. Um, Does it have all of its body parts now? Is it just yes. like swimming around in there? It has Ugh. all of its body parts, and it's somersaulting and kicking my butt. It wakes up at one a.m., so that's it. It, <laughs> it, but it wakes up at one in the morning and decides it's time to do somersaults. So. Mm, that just sounds so not fun happy 30th by the thank way thank you so much em. thank you so much i'm so excited to be sober on that day uh, <laughs> it's been great thanks honestly i think you really made up for it with that story i'm like i want to make everyone on my birthday list sit down and listen to the episode as like a, a they're reading. probably all going to because i asked for comments from each of them they all want to mm-hmm. hear themselves uh in the show so your sister really was the first one to get back and just roasted you immediately. I was like, this is, <laughs> this is the energy I'm going for. And then she went, yeah, well, she just spilled a bunch of milk tea in my car. So this, let's consider this revenge. <laughs> I did do that. I did, <laughs> did do that all over her brand. It's not a brand new car, but it's a new car. Yeah. She just got her driver's license. So oops, my bad. Um, anyway, so <sighs> I, uh, if your sister is listening, thank you for being so timely. Cause everyone else waited a little bit longer but you came right at me you were prepared to wow. say something so I like how my mom's probably listening going well she had a lot of homework and a lot of other your mom I was too. your mom was a trooper I said like hey can you just give me some like uh I asked everyone like oh what are some physical characteristics behaviors interests like what in your uh, personal experience uh, interacting with this cryptid what have you noticed <laughs> And then she literally went like, oh, give me your email. And I got this huge email back with all this she stuff. So she no, it was a, very she sweet. She wrote a dissertation once. So she decides that everything is a new dissertation. It was um, very sweet. I, I thought it, it, she's a great sense of, she has a great ability to roast and uh, compliment someone at the same time by being like, she really thought she was cool, but I guess a, she's nice. She's a sister also. <laughs> she's a great sister, but also she terrorized us. And also I love her very, very much, but she's confident but not but she kind of sucks sometimes <laughs> yeah. no 
know, it was very, I did, I did appreciate that there were at least some nice ones to like end on. Otherwise I was just going to awkwardly be like, and that's everyone roasting you. That's the roast. <laughs> um, I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised. It's okay. Wow, I did that like that funny. Geo said no comment. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's fuck not you surprising guy. to me at all. Yeah. If I like talk to my representation and I tried and Maggie said, <laughs> I don't I'm even... also not interested. <laughs> Gio and I are not interested in discussing this. We would like to take ourselves out of the narrative. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you guys, I wish I had a fun, sweet story. Um, I don't. Uh, so this is the story of the Wichita massacre and oh my God. It, it's really brutal and horrible. And just a downer and a half so god great okay I'm i ready. apologize if you have anything joyful to say during it and please let me know oh okay i'll try i'll try very hard to find something nice to say and joyful during a massacre story <laughs> yeah yeah so there i mean i know we don't necessarily do trigger warnings but i guess maybe i should try doing them i don't know i don't know i still don't know where to stand on this um but because all of the stories are just horrible and, and you don't want to pick and choose like yeah all of them, like do a all of them should have a blanket statement exactly trigger warning yeah um but there is sexual assault uh and Ooh, gore okay trigger uh, some some kind of gore so if you're like Shit. eating maybe or something i don't know um yeah. it's nothing like the sylvia likens like and not as graphic as that so oh that's good so at least there's that um okay so this takes place in Wichita, Kansas. It's the early hours of December 15th, 2000, and it's 10 days until Christmas. There's a couple who have their Christmas lights up and they are awakened by urgent knocking on the door. So they open oh. the door and they see a woman there and she's completely naked, even though it's like 15 degrees out in Kansas mm. in the wintertime. And on top of all this, she has a severe head wound and she's bleeding from her head. Oh my God. So according to the Oxygen documentary on this story, uh, the couple invites her inside where she sobs and says, I need to tell you my story before I die. <gasps> oh my God. Wow. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> happy happy That's... birthday to you. Oh my gosh. Wow. Let's all just like remember the time when like there was a cryptid in the woods losing all of their favorite collections. Like I, if I play this actually for someone to listen on my birthday, I'm going to be like hard stop right at the end right. of the story. We're not going any further. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the night before December 14th, 2000, this woman, 25 year old teacher known as Holly G uh, to, on court records had gone to spend the night with her boyfriend, 26 year old Jason Bayford, Bayford, Bayford. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. And he uh, was an Augusta high school science teacher and a coach. And he lived at 12727 East Birchwood Drive. So Holly goes to visit Jason, her boyfriend, and she's going to spend the night there. Jason had two housemates, Bradley Haka, who was a 27-year-old financial analyst, and Aaron Sander, a 29-year-old student of the priesthood. Hmm. I don't know if there's a better way to say that, but that one sounds fancy. Student okay. of the priesthood. So priesthood. like in like ministry school or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Like presumably on the path to becoming a priest. Um, so Holly, uh, which is interesting because we mentioned his ex-girlfriend comes over later. So I, I like wonder oh. if, if it's because he's now like, I'm celibate oh. now. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. Or a late, a late bloomer into the gospel, maybe. <laughs> As they say. As they say, a late Bible bloomer. You know how they are. A late Bible bloomer. That's fun. Um, I like that. So, <laughs> so he lives. Wait with, a minute. What? Wait a minute. Belated Bible bloomer. Wait. Yeah. Yes. Belated Bible bloomer. What did you? What did we say? The we a late, late Bible bloomer. I wanted the alliteration. I got it. Belated Bible bloomer. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, I thought when you yelled, wait a minute, that you're going to be like, is this about me? And I was going to be like, no, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I a student of the priesthood? <laughs> wait a minute. I asked Linda anything that she could tell me. And she said, M's pretty much a priest. It's, yeah, it's, it as checks far out. As, very I, religious. I am a saint. So. Very saintly, <laughs> very religious. Oh my God. Okay, so Holly and her schnauzer, Nikki, Got to the house at 8 30 p.m although her boyfriend wasn't home yet um he was still coaching basketball so she chilled out with bradley and aaron and they were soon joined by aaron's former girlfriend heather mueller a 25 mm -hmm. year old wichita state university graduate and church preschool teacher so i thought that was interesting they were in a relationship and then split up but they're clearly still friends and she teaches 
pre church preschool and he teaches like Sunday school, I guess. And he, he's a, becoming a priest. Got it. I don't know. Interesting, interesting dynamic there. I imagine. Hmm. So at around 9 PM, Holly went down to her boyfriend's room to grade papers and watch ER. Very sweet. Yes. Uh, as she waited for Jason to arrive and he did so at 9 15. So Holly went to bed around 10 and Jason went, pulled a Christine, went to all the doors and windows to do the classic, like just lock check, make sure everything's closed. And the whole house, except Jason headed to sleep with Aaron sleeping on the sofa, his former girlfriend, Heather, taking his bed in the second floor and Bradley heading to his room in the basement. So the only person awake was Jason, um, okay. who had just gotten home at nine 15. Okay. So a little after 11, Holly remembers seeing the porch lights turn on. And then she hears shouting. Hmm. She could hear Jason's voice accompanied by two unknown voices. And as the screaming got closer to the door of Jason's bedroom where Holly was sleeping, uh, she heard it being forced open by two men who had a hold of Jason. Oh, shit. This is a very dark story. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Uh, it would later be revealed that the two men were Jonathan and Reginald Carr. They were brothers and they had recently moved to Wichita. And as one of the men pulled the covers off the bed to reveal Holly, the other left the room and returned, bringing Aaron Sander at gunpoint. So the brothers demanded the group tell them who else was in the house, and Holly revealed that Bradley and Heather were also in the house as well. One of the intruders went off and grabbed Bradley and Heather out of their bedrooms and dragged them so they were all together in the same room. Then the five hostages were stripped of their clothing and ordered to give over any money or valuables they had. Um, they didn't have much. I mean, they were like young. They had like mostly used credit cards. So they didn't have much cash or many valuables on them, but they handed over what they had and um, were then, okay, well, I'll get to where they were placed in a moment. But Holly remembers they were just shouting and very demanding. One of the men asked, have any ATM cards? And we all raised our hands. So now they've kind of told the intruders, like, we don't have valuables on us, but we do have basically cash out of ATMs right. that you right. can access. So with that, the Carr brothers threw the five hostages into the bedroom closet uh, all together before pulling them out one by one or in pairs to force them to perform sexual acts on each other at gunpoint. Oh and God. in in between that, they would beat them with a golf club. <gasps> oh my God. Oopsies. Oh my god! That story for this week. I'm so sorry. This is really an, uh, quite a roller coaster of yeah experiences. It just gets worse and worse. So the gunman then put the victims back into the closet, and the plan soon became apparent that Reginald would take the victims out one by one to drive to an ATM and take out each person's cash. So Reginald took Bradley first to a nearby ATM, and. During this time, Jonathan took Holly out of the closet and raped her. And when Bradley returned, Jason was next to go off to the ATM. And during this time, Jonathan raped Heather. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so bad. It's God. so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. So as Bradley God. was now in the closet, having been to the ATM, Holly and Aaron were like basically whispering to him, um, being like, what should we do? Like, what? he took you to the ATM and he's about to take us like what, sh what, what should we do what's the plan like should yeah. we and uh, apparently Bradley was so traumatized that he was just silent and like wow. shaking and just couldn't even answer did any um, assault sexual assault happen to him um, not directly only like that they were being forced to perform it on each other sure but the but the the two brothers weren't doing they did anything not, to the no. guys mm -mm. Okay. okay just Holly and Heather okay so when Reginald returned with Jason, Holly was next to go with Reginald. And as they were leaving the house, he only allowed her to put on a sweater, like no underwear, no pants, nothing, just a sweater. And she drove the car to a bank during which he told her not to look at him as he crouched in the back seat. And she would later testify, I asked him if he was going to hurt us. And he said, no. I said, do you promise you're not going to kill us? And he said, yes. All I'm going to say is he's a big fat liar. Wow. Wow. So after getting the money from the ATM, um, apparently Reginald said to her that he wished we could have met under different circumstances. He said I was cute and we probably would have hit it off. It's oh my God. Disgusting. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Disgusting. Wow. That's horrific. Yeah. 
yeah, this is like next level horrific. So when they returned, the Carr brothers had accumulated $1,600 from each of their hostages, which I assume is probably like the limit on the ATM or something. Ah, uh, um, okay. Because it's a very specific number. Yeah. And then Holly and Heather were both raped again uh, repeatedly by Reginald and Jonathan. And after this, the Carr brothers turned over the house looking for money and anything of value. And they did find in a coffee can an engagement ring that was hidden there. Okay, that's awful. That's just beyond. Um, I hate it. Sorry, I'm muting for a moment. Yikes. I think maybe M's birthday gift has arrived. What wonderful timing. Oh, and gosh. Finally, I needed an up because yeah. talk hmm. about a deflation of my, of my emotions. Of your there. birthday happiness Ooh. yeah i really uh, didn't plan this through and i apologize uh oh my gosh and how, this was in 2000 this whole thing yes 2000 wow just beyond just beyond horrid um so i'm gonna keep just uh going here folks so i'm sure. sorry if your dog is upset by gia's barking but um don't it's showbiz baby <laughs> right exactly <laughs> we both say stupid cliches about showbiz <laughs> Oh my God. Um, okay. So they found an engagement ring in a coffee can and it turns out Jason had been planning uh, to propose to Holly the following week. And that was the engagement ring he had bought for her. Wow. And when the ring was discovered, Holly remembered Jason leaning over to her and saying, that's for you. I was going to ask you to marry me. Oh my God. I know that part makes me cry. Wow. Whoa. And Okay, I'll figure it out on the way. I'll. I was gonna ask a question, but I have a hunch I'm gonna figure it out. It's okay. I'll probably tell you, but if not, let me know. Uh, so around 2 a.m., the Car Brothers led the five victims outside into the 17 degree temperature, which in Celsius is negative eight. For anyone who uses the proper measurement of you know, <laughs> temperatures, uh, and it was snowing. They were all naked, apart from the women who were allowed to wear a sweater each. Um, in Aaron's Honda and Jason's truck, the group drove off into the night, eventually pulling up at an empty striker soccer complex, which basically at this point was just an empty snowy soccer field in the middle of the night. Okay. So the group was told to line up, turn away and kneel. Oh my God. Fuck. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Um, so as they did, as they were told, Holly, who was kneeling next to, oh, hi, Geo. Are you done down there? He just walked Thank up God. and stared at me like, hey. He, he could sense my tension through the computer. He was like, Jesus, I'll go up here fine. He probably was like, I just did a great thing and barked for 10 minutes. Aren't you proud of me? Oh. Uh, birthday gift is here. Thank you, Gio. You did great. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looks pretty damn proud of himself. So, uh, okay, sorry. So they were forced to the soccer complex. They were told to kneel and turn away from the two brothers. As they did as they were told, Holly was kneeling next to her boyfriend and she f heard the first gunshot. She then heard a second that was closer and a third next to her. And then they shot her in the head. And she essentially, they were all shot in the head execution style. So she remembered later, I felt the bullet hit the back of my head. It went kind of gray with white, like stars. I wasn't knocked unconscious. I didn't fall forward. Then someone kicked me and I had fallen forward. I was playing dead. I didn't move. I didn't want them to shoot me again. Holly lay in the snow as the gunman hopped back into one of the cars, drove over the bodies and then drove off. Wow. Holly survived this. Like, like forever or only until they got to forever. Georgia. Wow. So she's, she's with us still. Whoa. But my God. That moment of like, no, I can't imagine that moment of like, okay, I've been shot in the head and I need to pretend to be dead now. Well, like, it's like at any moment I'm going to die now. Like, like I right. would imagine I there's, I wouldn't even think like, oh, you made it. I would think, oh, this is just what death is. Like, it's just going to happen. I'm in, in the process. Of, right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. And, and um, oh, horrible, horrible. So uh, according to an article in Mental Floss, medical personnel later determined that the metal barrette in Holly's hair had deflected the bullet's impact and had saved her life. Wow. Her hair clip. It's so fucking weird. Every time you talk about someone surviving 
like a wild, horrible experience. It's always the tiniest thing that is like all it's of a like sudden a bulletproof for that moment. Yeah. Or, or so- something wild. What that was, like it ends the, up- was it the Night Stalker recently yeah. that you did? And like, it was like his phone or something. Was, she like put up her hand or something and was it her phone? Yeah, it was something. Or her car keys. Her car keys. Her car keys. Are you fucking kidding? Me? Like, like what? What in the world? I'm just trying to think. I'm like, maybe I should just run around wearing like 85 accessories at all. I was times. gonna. I was like, <laughs> I just want to go to Claire's and buy out a thousand <laughs> hair clips just and just barrettes. put them all over me. <laughs> oh my god! Like, can you imagine? Like, I would to know that that you were that like you were literally yeah. hair clip close to death completely and i mean i hate when they say this in shows like i've been watching a lot of svu and it drives me crazy when like uh some a survivor of something like this is in the hospital and they say you're one very lucky person and it's like okay right like i'm lucky that it's like my breath I- saved me but i'm not lucky that i've been shot in the head you know it's like right yeah i'm, I'm just- and what I'm very lucky in a very specific way, but all the other ways I am not clearly having a good day. Like, yeah, this isn't something to applaud. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why that always read me the wrong way. Maybe it's just me being overly sensitive. It's entirely possible. But um, I hesitate to say she was very lucky because it's like, no, she was She was very <laughs> lucky at the very bitter end. And like, yeah, that like was one it. moment like, of this terribly unlucky experience maybe was very lucky, but in yeah. a sea of bad luck and yes. a sea of horrible experiences. Yes. You had a silver lining. Exactly. I think maybe that's like a, a more succinct way or a more overarching way of putting it. So, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you are still alive, but also like now you're alive with this horrific trauma for the rest and you of experience your life. Something that could have just been totally avoided yeah if mm-hmm. two people hadn't done this to you yeah so this is kind of where it's a little bit gory um so holly said i waited until i couldn't hear anymore then i turned to, and then i turned my head and saw lights going i looked at everyone everyone was face down jason was next to me i rolled him over there was blood squirting everywhere so i took my sweater off and tied it around his head to try and stop it he had blood coming out of his eyes oh my god so, and remember, she was only allowed to wear a sweater. So she took off the one piece of clothing she had, tied it around him. Right. And then she said, I needed to get help and fast. So, and arguably the last conversation they ever had was him saying, I was going to give you, yes. I was going to marry you. I mean, it's like, it's horrible. You can't make this shit up. It's like out of a movie. So she obviously knew she needed to get help stat. Um, she wearing nothing um, and with a literal bullet wound through her head, uh, walked for a mile across the field, a pond, and a construction site. Holy the, shit. Yeah, in the sn- in 16 degree weather toward the Christmas lights she saw in the distance. So that's why I mentioned earlier that this couple who had Christmas lights up heard knocking on their door because she, like, from a mile followed Christmas lights she saw in the distance and was able to get to this house to call for help. Wow. That was probably like a beacon. Like you imagine like otherwise not knowing where you are and just going in the wrong direction and dying. Like completely like wandering into the woods. Who knows? I mean, you're on a soccer field. She had to walk through a pond and uh, a construction site. Like there's no lights or people there. So yeah, thank God she saw something. Um, so after a long trek in the snow, literally over a mile, she eventually arrived at this couple's house and told them her story. And she only let them call the police after she finished the story. I think she just wanted to make sure all everything was out before they got paramedics. And I, I don't know. It was just very important to her that apparently when he first started calling 911, she grabbed the phone and said, I just need to tell you my story before I die. Wow. Because um, she was like, I probably don't have a lot of time. Like, don't waste your time on an ambulance. Just let me tell you what happened first. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, she told them what happened. And it was only after she finished that she let them call the police. Uh, I read the 911 transcript. Um, you can find it online. It's pretty hidden. Somebody, it's not available anymore, but somebody had <laughs> copy and pasted it into like a Google Groups forum or something somewhere. Mm. Um, it's really upsetting, obviously. And it's, you know, the operator basically just asking a bunch of questions. And it sounds frustrating because, or it feels frustrating because you're reading it and going, 
she has a bullet wound in her head, like get an ambulance. But like they had already called the ambulance, but the operator needs to get as much information. Right. So the operator's going like, how tall was he? <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, he and he has I, a bullet wound. <laughs> I totally get both sides of like totally you're trained to stay calm. But like, also this guy is like, yo, like you better haul this ass right now. Girl like- is naked on my couch and she's dying and she's bleeding. And so they'll be like, so what happened? And she screamed like, they shot me in the head and she's like, I know, or the operator's like, I know the ambulance should be there any second. And it was there like within moments. So it wasn't like, you know, but it, it's just like, why are you so calm? <laughs> There's yeah. so much chaos happening. It's so, it's so like when you're not in the situation, nice to know that someone will remain calm. But when it yes. is happening, it's like, can you fucking like read the room, my guy? Yeah, like it, we are exactly in danger. It. And like, you have to probably have such a head on your shoulders to be able to be that person to say, can you just tell me how tall he was? Like who you saw, what address it was. And she was answering all these questions. She's like, it was one, two, seven, two, seven East, whatever drive. Um, and she was answering wow. all the questions, but like to be that operator, to be like, okay, I know you were shot in the head, but tell me, I mean, I, but be- that, that poor dispatch probably went home later and took a stiff drink. That's like, what I think is like, you must have a like, cool head and then have to be able to like, let that go somewhere else completely. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of pressure. So anyway, so they, uh, da, 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 da. so she lets them call the police. Um, she then asked them to call her mother, her boyfriend's parents. And then she started to wonder and worry about the kids that she taught at school saying, who's going to take care of the kids. And they're like, please do not worry about that now. Like that further proof, by the way, that teachers are like, that's definitely not paid well, definitely not paid enough. (laughs) No teachers deserve the world. And thank you also to 911 dispatchers. Right. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, so as part of the, uh, so sorry, the police arrived. They questioned her briefly, uh, which included asking information to help find Jason's truck. And she literally was like, it's a two door silver Honda. Like she was with it. Like she was on yeah. top of it. Um, and well, so she probably also thought like, I'm about to die. Like yes. the, the adrenaline was probably out of sight being I can't like, imagine. even if you're in pain, like be as alert as possible right now, because this is your only shot. Yeah. The you only know? indication during that whole thing was she said like, my head hurts. And I'm like, yeah, girl. <laughs> It's like, I, I sure bet so. Like, etc. cetera, it isn't fixed in this one. Oh like, my God. Yeah. So I just was so impressed at everybody's, everybody in this situation, even the couple who basically like sat her down and were oh my God. like this in the middle of the night. But so they asked um, her for information and they were able to help find Jason's truck. Uh, she was then rushed to the hospital. And as part of the investigation into the quadruple murder, police discovered that the brothers had returned to the first crime scene. So the house ransacked the home for valuables. And as documented by the investigator conducting the autopsy, they killed Holly's dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not surprised, but it really didn't have to happen at all. I know. It's just... Mm. it's just terrible um especially and holly is the one that's alive right exactly yeah so like you're like hopefully i at least yeah. have to go i have my dog to go home to after this nope um yeah and i want to this is add- a really awful birthday this is <laughs> like you just have to picture em saying that with their glow sticks on their head <laughs> looking down it's the saddest thing i've ever seen <laughs> em i owe you the world Oh my God. (laughs) I owe you the fucking world. This is horrible. Uh, It's okay. This is horrible. Oh, fuck me. Okay. Um, so at seven, so, well, while we're in it, I'm just going to tell you another horrible thing that happened. So, (laughs) so I read the nine one transcript and that was where I learned this information, which is that Holly said when she, she was talking to the operator through the guy uh at the house and she said um my boyfriend was alive when i left someone needs to go check on him so like Mm. she checked and put the sweater on him and she was like he was still breathing um and oh my god for the record he did not survive but just that moment of like maybe he may because it reminded me of when you said like hey maybe the dog survived like well even still like like she probably had a hunch he wasn't going to make it but there is that hope and also like i can't imagine the the 
moral struggle i or i don't of know like the, leaving the, him behind of leaving him behind yeah. being like if i don't leave i can't get us help but if i leave and you're alone and scared and alive then like you exactly know, that must just have been uh, like to want to be there traumatic to be there in, in case he did die and you don't want him to die alone but also you need to go save yourself and... but there's like that choice you have to make and then and potentially save him too if you get help right um so yeah it must have just been horrific uh so unfortunately she was the only one who survived but i mean fortunately she did survive so at 7 30 that morning the truck was reported to have been spotted outside a downtown apartment building the police moved in to seal off the area and two officers knocked on the door to the apartment and after several minutes stephanie donley who was reginald's girlfriend opened the door uh, police caught Reginald as he tried to slip out a window, and with him he had Heather's watch in his pocket, along with Jason's credit card and nearly a thousand dollars in cash. So, like, caught red-handed. Hmm. Um, and through his girlfriend Stephanie, police were able to find Jonathan by tracking his car, a Plymouth Fury. And after a short chase, he was arrested at 12 p.m. Uh, Jonathan's leather jacket was found with a diamond ring in one of its pockets, which was reportedly similar to the one Jason had bought hmm. to propose to Holly. Um, and remember, she hadn't even seen it yet. So, like, right, she couldn't confirm that was the one. Has she now seen it? I assume so. Um, because I can't it was part of evidence. In, in I can't trial. imagine seeing it for the first time and knowing, like, the person who was supposed to give this to me is dead. It's like a completely different memory is now attached to this one thing. Completely. It's just, I mean, it's just bad. It's so bad. There's not wow. even like words to it. It's just so bad. Um, so, Let's go to Reginald and Jonathan. They are brothers, last name Carr. They're age 22 and 20. They had recently moved from Dodge City, Kansas to Wichita. And this was not even the first of their crime since moving here. They'd actually started a week earlier on December 8th when 23-year-old Andrew Schreiber, a Wichita State University baseball player, was uh, getting gas at a convenience store. And as he was returning to his car, the Carr brothers forced themselves into it and ordered him to drive to various ATMs to withdraw money. And once the fi card finally began to be rejected, they forced him to drive to a field where they dragged him out of his car, pistol whipped him, shot out his tires, and then sped away in their own car. So they left him alive. <clears throat> and when they described this in the documentary I watched, um, they were saying that he they were saying that he was sitting there on his knees similar to how the other group later died yeah. um and he heard a gunshot and he was as obviously his first assumption is i've been shot but it turns yeah. out they just shot out his tires oh uh, so still, that must have just been still so the, traumatic. the trauma the mm -hmm. trauma wow so he was left alive um and as he uh buh, 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 sorry Four days later, on the 11th of December, the Carr brothers had attempted to hijack an SUV that belonged to 55-year-old Linda Walenta. Um, she had noticed a car following her, so when the driver approached, she was suspicious. He was seemingly asking for help, so she rolled her window down just a crack, but she was yeah. suspicious. But don't even do that, folks, because he stuck a gun sideways into the opening and shot her several times as she tried wow. to drive away. Uh, she was a librarian and a cellist in the Wichita Symphony Orchestra and a mother. She at first survived the shooting, but was paralyzed from the waist down. And she was able to help police in the investigation, but she died of her wounds three weeks later. Oh, my God. <sighs> wow. These are just true monsters. Monsters. Um, and it's fascinating to hear their backstory because the way that this kind of developed between the brothers is like fascinating too, that um, they had like loving parents and everything, but then they had a little sister who died of leukemia. And I guess it like really traumatized them both in different ways. Mm. And then their parents became really distant when their sister died. And that caused more developmental issues. They started drinking at like age 11. 11 or something like really young and started smoking and drinking and doing drugs and like to the point that it hindered their development um and it's just it's a, just a tragic story all around but mm. the police were God. able to link the attack on mrs walenta the shooting of schreiber's tires and the murder of holly's friends once they found the gun and it was a 380 caliber semi-automatic handgun found in a field along route 96 
Uh, the brothers were both arrested on December 16, 2000, and Holly, Andrew Schreiber, and Linda Walenta, uh, Walenta all uh, uh, identified them in a lineup. Wow. wow. So the car trial was set to begin on September 9, 2001, but was delayed uh, by defense moving, maneuvering because the defense launched a poll in Sedgwick County, which revealed that 74% of county residents thought that the cars were, quote, definitely guilty or probably guilty. And the defense argued that the cars would not be able to get a fair trial, but the judge overruled this and the trial was set to continue. And then because each of the brothers had their own lawyer, the defense urged separate tri- urged for separate trials saying like, well, each brother's lawyer is just going to try to pin it on the other brother. Mm, okay. Um, but the, uh, the, sorry, according to an article by Stephen Webster, prosecutor Nola Fulston pointed out that many people accused of committing crimes together are tried together. And since the trial is expected to last a month and involve 70 witnesses, two trials was out of the question. Got it. Um, it would be too much expense, too inconvenient. We're going to keep both brothers in one trial. Also a question. Oh. I don't know if you'll know this at all. But, Probably but not, but go for it. In terms of trials, when they like find out like that the demographic is that they wouldn't, that someone wouldn't get a fair trial. Mm-hmm why does that matter like if you're caught red-handed and like 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 ted bundy or something or like you know like a some sort of notorious murderer like like charles manson like Mm -hmm. there's a i have a hunch he would have quote not had a fair trial because most people thought he was right that's part of the that ends up being a problem a lot of times because of the media and because in a trial they want you like certain evidence is admissible certain evidence is not supposed to be considered by the jury um and so best case scenario is that the jury doesn't know much if at Mm -hmm. all about what happened so that they can only take the facts given to them and make a decision based on that but obviously with high profile cases like (laughs) ted bundy that becomes more difficult yeah um and so they do try to find the least biased people that they can because you know, if it is a, a lot of times in like a small town where everybody knows what happened or he has heard on the media that they know what, that, you know, what happened, um, they will move the case to a different county or a different city. Got it. Okay. To try and find like a, I was going to ask like, what, how do you avoid that? They then? move the trial typically. Got it. Okay. Um, to try and find a less biased uh, area. I mean, even like when blaze was in that murder trial, uh, as a as a juror, not like yeah, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> and Mr. Loves L was discussing the shifter a little too crazy. <laughs> yeah. Alexander loves to make that joke, like yeah. <laughs> anyway, but so when Blaze was <laughs> a juror on that murder trial, he was describing it later as like they asked you, ev- they asked the jurors everything from you know questions about their opinions on race, about sex workers, about like anything that might be pertinent. And if you have like a skewed perspective or a really strong opinion about police or sex workers or, you know, things like that, they, yeah. they can argue to kick you off the jury because they're like, this person's already biased. Um, right. And so anyway, that's, that's all I know about it is that they try to find people who know less about the case. Um, mm. So anyway, uh, they decided to do the trial both of them together so either way they decided even if the lawyers did try to blame the other's clients uh what would essentially happen is that at least the jury would get more information from both sides and learn about their criminal records so they just decided to keep it that way um in reference to the department of correction website and blog true crime discussions quote jonathan did not appear to have a past criminal history or at least not one that had sent him to actual prison reginald however had two prior convictions one was in 95 for theft and assault and another was in 96 for possession of drugs and he had been released that year in 2000 for those crimes um and when you hear about their relationship jonathan is kind of the one that follows the leader so to speak sure and reginald is kind of like the boss the alpha. in that way yeah. the alpha and um jonathan is the one who who let who decided to let uh the soccer player live uh-huh. um schreiber andrew schreiber right. uh decided to kind of let him survive because he just had more of a a moral struggle with this whole thing i guess so 
The trial began on October 7th and lasted just short of a month. And by November 4th, the jury returned after a 14 hour deliberation. Reginald Carr, 24, who was in shackles after reportedly threatening deputies and Jonathan Carr, the younger one who was 22, were with their attorneys as the verdicts were read as guilty. Mm. So each brother faced the same 47 counts for the nine day crime spree. Reginald faced an additional three counts for being possession in possession of a firearm. Okay. And finally, on November 15th, the Carr brothers were sentenced to death. Okay, got it. But it was not as simple as that because there had been an ongoing deliberate. Of course, it's not um, <laughs> yeah. an ongoing deliberation because um, there had been a lot of rulings surrounding the Kansas death penalty law. And it had gotten all the way to like high court as far okay. as death penalty cases. And in 2004, the Kansas Supreme Court overturned the state's death penalty law, um, but then it was appealed and went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and they reinstated the death penalty. So people on death row were kind of being put on and off death row this entire time, depending on Supreme Court rulings. And It was like just back and forth, back and forth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So according to Kansas.com, on July 24th, 2014, the Kansas Supreme Court announced it had overturned the death sentences of the Carr brothers. Mm, Uh, They said they did so because the original trial judge hadn't separated the proceedings for each defendant. So now the court, the six justice majority who voted uh, to to overturn the death sentence said like they really should have gotten separate trials. Uh, Even though that was like out of the question originally. So the judge who originally presided over the case had decided to do them together but now the Kansas uh, Supreme Court was like several years later was like that was not the way to go and the judge had passed by this point so uh-huh. there was no way to like and there's no retrial bring him into the situation okay. um no since the verdict had already been made so they said they should have been separated um and they unanimously reversed three of each of the defendants four capital convictions because Apparently, they also believe the jury didn't get enough instruction on sex crime-based capital murder uh, charges. Okay. Whatever that means. Um, So essentially, they were saying the jury didn't get enough guidance on how to how to deal with this kind of a case, and so we're just throwing it out. Um, So Sarah Ellen Johnson, an attorney representing Jonathan Carr, called the original proceedings uh, filled with errors to the point that it wasn't a fair trial that being said she's his attorney so Mm. she's probably going to say that um and the high court upheld most of the convictions against each of the brothers uh despite all these quote-unquote errors and um basically they said that the reason the brothers should have gotten separate trials is because they had a difference in moral culpability because one didn't want them to die and one did right like essentially they're saying two people even if they commit crimes together typically have different levels of involvement different levels of like passion (laughs) yeah exactly like like involvement with a crime or um commitment to the crime and so they basically said like they're not the same person they should have gotten two separate trials which i think does make sense yeah um for example they were also saying that if you put the defendants together in one trial this sometimes uh, can cause a jury to show mercy to one while refusing Uh, to show mercy to the other uh and that could be problematic because then like one of them becomes the perpetrator and then the other one kind of it lessens the culpability on that person yeah anyway they were still already sentenced to serve at least 70 to 80 years in prison so it was more of a matter of death penalty than they weren't going to get out of jail if that makes sense right um But then in January of 2016, according to a USA Today article, the United States Supreme Court in an eight to one ruling reinstated the death sentence, uh, overturning the Kansas Supreme Court ruling that neither the jury instructions or the combined sentencing proceedings were violating the Constitution back on death row. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. And the most Talk recent about article, an emotional roller coaster all over the story. Is Jeez. Bananas. And the most recent article was from a week ago, like literally <gasps> May 25th. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like holy shit. What's the new what's the what's the 411? Here's the 411. Uh on May 5th, 25th, 2021, um on Kansas.com, the article explains that the case is now back in the Kansas High Court in an effort to appeal the death sentence. I see. So they've been back and forth, back and forth, back and <clears> forth, <throat> and now the they're 
attorneys are trying to get them back off of death row. Wow. But they're there for now. At least as of a week ago, they are still on death row. Whew. Um, I want to briefly touch on, there's only a little bit left here, but I want to touch on the kind of racial issues that surround this case, uh, which oh, are pretty okay. major. So according to a blog called True Crime Discussions, um, there were white people who were angry that the Carr brothers, who, by the way, were black, were not charged with hate crimes because their victims were white. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. Okay. Well, yeah, that deserves all of the um, oy vey, eye roll, face palm. Yeah. Fucking all of it. sit down uh, reactions. So there were- I mean, sorry, like they don't deserve to be defended. No, like, no, no. In no. most ways, but also like, that's not what this is. But that's not a fair- <laughs> and we'll get into that even a little bit more here because uh, years after the crimes, the Wichita Eagle made a striking comment about how the deaths of four young black people who had been murdered eight days before the Carr brother Wichita, Wichita massacre um, received notably less media coverage. So there had been a massacre. That's what they're calling this one, a massacre uh -huh. eight days earlier of yep. four black people in the area. And that got no press, you know, virtually. Uh, and so it's kind of like, you can't just say it's a hate crime. To, yeah. Like they're, they're in jail. I mean, they've been punished for this crime. It's heinous. Nobody's defending them on that front, but it's like. It's still a massacre. Like you already won in terms yes, of like us yes, hating yes. them. You don't it's have to like full... turn it into something else that it's not. Exactly. Like that's not what this issue is. Um, so <laughs> uh, this was in reference to the horrible crimes of 19 year old Cornelius Oliver, um, who was black himself, who had killed his girlfriend, 18-year-old Rashonda Wheaton, her roommate, 17-year-old Dessa Ford, 19-year-old Jermaine Levy, and 18-year-old Quincy Williams. Uh, he had shot the group in the back of their heads while they sat on the couch. So again, just a full-on execution-style massacre, and this happened eight days before. And fucking nothing. Yeah, nothing. Uh, Cornelius Oliver is serving a life sentence after being convicted of the four murders. And although the natures of the crimes were different in that, like the Carr brothers were choosing random victims. Um, and in the Oliver case, he knew the victims. Um, the fact that, and also the, I will say too, the Oliver case didn't have the elements of torture or rape that the, the, the Carr brothers case had. Um, it was still a very similar situation in terms sure. of like four people had been executed sure um so the four so wheaton ford levy and williams have been dubbed the forgotten four because of how their case fell under the radar and according to the true crime discussions blog um black people noticed that the car case received more attention because it was a black on white crime and that the white victims were held to a higher esteem is what has been theorized right um for obvious reasons and uh the cut this is pretty sad note candace reed who was dessa and quincy's cousin who were two of the forgotten four victims mm -hmm. she commented quote i talked to one member of city council who had lived in wichita for 33 years and didn't know what i was talking about <gasps> but the minute i mentioned oh. the car brothers he knew about that so it's just like you know it just Great. adds another element of like fucking a um, it's just like on top of everything else it makes you just want to go like really yeah and it's just so yeah, really, exactly. And uh, I do have one like positive note at the end here, which is that um, Holly G, and I don't want to share her last name because on most court records, it's not revealed. Sure, yeah. Um, she's the she's only- She's been through enough. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, yeah. Enough for many, many lifetimes. Yes, um, so she's gonna come back as a saint or something. I was about or, like, to say- she or you a know, queen, just have I don't know. a queen and have everyone serve her for the rest of her <laughs> sure next 10 so. lives. Oh my I gosh, I sure hope so. Uh, one so Holly G, the only survivor of the massacre, and Andrew Schreiber, the baseball player who had been left out in the field by the Carr brothers, they connected during the trial and got married in 2004. Wow, I know, and now they're married. And I did a, some light stalking, I'm not going to tell anyone how to access it or anything, and the profile is private, but. Um, from what I can tell on her Instagram, they have two children together. Oh, so that's nice. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm glad. And like so much dark, mm -hmm. like so much darkness, at least something, you know, came through, yeah, you know, exactly. Ugh, but still that's uh, wow. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> I, 
I don't have any. I, Oops. As Geo said earlier, no comment. So no comment. I'm so sorry. I uh, none of my stories are ever fun. Really, that one wasn't particularly brutal. It's that like, one was like painfully rough. Yeah. That one. Yeah. I, I understand why that. you struggled with whether or not there should be a content warning. Uh, yeah. Ooh. You know, it's just like, especially after, especially in comparison to what you had just done, I was like, oh dear. Okay. They were definitely two very different genres, weren't they? Yeah. yeah probably the mo- two most different genres that you could imagine. Yeah. I am very excited for you to go back and listen to uh, the first half my story. <laughs> yeah. And I would like, I would like a live texting of you realizing you know, oh when... it'll happen okay perfect uh, well it'll thank you everyone happen. for coming to our birthday <laughs> extravaganza i hope oh you're as depressed God. as we are now you're gonna need to add more uh, addendums to my sto- to your story of me like she just likes to put everyone in a foul mood yeah and and that's why we drink uh why do you drink it was because it's my birthday and now it's like because this was my birthday like this was your birthday <laughs> present this was the gift what a what a can i return so it sorry. where's the receipt <laughs> i forgot i lost the gift receipt in the woods on my way yeah. to, <laughs> my way to my nest <laughs> all right well thank you everybody and please for uh since it's our birthday week and the beginning of our birthday month please go celebrate and have fun and uh think of please us while you drink get on my behalf nice i want to drink drunk. vicariously yeah 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 and, and we'll talk to you next week that's why we celebrate our birthdays drink yay <laughs>